Well, and first of all, mind. I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome everybody and all our folks out on Facebook Live and joining us through Zoom. We're very, very pleased to have you with us. My name is Kathleen Springer, and I'm the board chair of the National Kidney Foundation of Wisconsin. And I was just tell you a little bit about myself. I came to this awesome organization um, through the work that I did at Aurora um, in managing their transplantation uh, clinic in, a, in the abdominal transplant clinic, actually. And I met um, the organization that way, and I saw all the great things that they did for all of the folks that are dealing with different aspects of kidney disease and, and organ transplantation. Um, I look forward to um, continuing our journey. Um, there is one huge bit of news that we have that I'd like to do, and I'd like to take this time to introduce Mike Crowley, who is a chief executive officer of the National Kidney Foundation of Wisconsin. He just joined us back on February 18th, and I'm pleased to introduce Mike. Why don't you go and say a few words, Mike? Yes, that was January 18th, Kathleen. Oh, sorry, January 18th. It isn't February 18th yet. Great. So yes, my name is Mike Crowley. Thank you, Kathy, for the introduction. Uh, I'm the new CEO for the National Kidney Foundation of Wisconsin. I'm very excited, very proud to be associated with this organization. A lot of great work has been done in the past, and we will continue to build on the work that has been done uh, supporting uh, people and families that are affected by chronic kidney disease and also transplantation of organs. Um, I'm excited to continue our programs through the year. Um, hopefully we have a few of our events this year, even if they are virtual. Um, Capital City Walk, uh, hopefully the gala next year around this time. And um, a few surprises hopefully along the way. And one of the best parts about uh, my past three weeks uh, with this organization is I'm starting to connect with people, um, hearing some stories, and it's helping me feel more connected to the organization. Obviously, when you start a new job uh, with an organization, it takes a period of time to get familiar with uh, how things run. A business is a business. But with the National Kidney Foundation of Wisconsin and the National Kidney Foundation, it, it's about the people and families and being there to support them, help them, educate them, keep them involved, know that we're a resource for the organization or, or for the families and people that are affected. And that's what I like. I like the people side of this. Um, so... As time goes on, people will get to know me. I will get to know them. We will continue to do the great work that the National Kidney Foundation of Wisconsin has done for over a half a century. And right now I'd like to introduce Lisa. Well, actually, are we gonna go back to Kathy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can take it from you. There's just a couple housekeeping items that I would like to just take care of though. Thank you so much, Mike, for introducing yourself. Um, the presentation, being present and engaged is such an important um, aspect of just who we are as a, in our daily lives and just how we function with each other. And as far as the meeting itself, how we're going to run it, there's a few housekeeping items. First, it, first of all, during the meeting, um, there are some ways in which you can uh, maneuver through the Zoom itself or Facebook itself, um, you can click on participants first on the lower portion of your screen to make sure that your first, first and last name are displayed. Um, if not, you can go ahead and rename yourself by using the name you, you used when you registered for this event. Um, so on your computer, you can hover your mouse over your name and click on the blue more button and choose rename. Um, there is a sample here of what I just described. And I think that would give you a good picture. In addition, now it, during the program, there's gonna be some opportunity for, you know, if you have some questions or you have some comments or things like that, or you would like to communicate um, with us, there is a way in which you can do that. Watching and asking questions, you can, you if we could please keep yourself muted during the, um, 
during the presentation unless we open it up for questions that'd be great however we don't want you to forget those questions so make sure you use the in meeting chat to ask questions of the moderator of lisa actually while well introduced in just a minute and um you can either to a group or to an individual person, you can make a comment, ask a question, and then we will make sure that we do it and introduce that question or comment throughout the presentation. Use the microphone icon on the bottom left of your screen to unmute and mute your microphone. And John will go ahead and give us a couple of slides to kind of show us where that is. Um, also, you can use the video icon next to the microphone icon to start or stop the camera on your device. So we love to see your face, love to see who we're talking to, but I fully understand if you wanna, you know, not be seen the whole time or if you have to get rid of the video, you can just click on that icon and then that will stop your um, video from being shown. There's a couple things about the National Kidney Foundation that I'd really like to share, and I'm hoping you all know, but in just in case you don't, um, you can help support the National Kidney Foundation of Wisconsin um, through Amazon Smile. And I'm not sure if you were familiar with that, but if you visit smile.amazon.com and select the National Kidney Foundation as your charity of choice, they, we will get some residuals from the purchases that you make through Amazon Smile. So that's a great way that you can support our organizations to continue to do programs such as this. So we're really excited for that opportunity. Also, another thing that the Kidney Foundation does, which is really exciting, especially now in the dead of winter, if you're deciding if your car's just not starting anymore and you just need to go buy one, we would welcome taking that car off of your hands if it works or not. We are going to come and pick it up for you, and we will. You will then get a deduction, a tax deduction, as well as you'll be supporting the National Kidney Foundation of Wisconsin as well through that awesome program. Um, one of the nice um, parts about that is you're going to be able to get things off your hands as well as support the organization. Now, for our great presentation tonight, present, being present and engaged, I would like to introduce Lisa Hare, who is the Program Manager of Customer Experience and Performance Excellence Experience Management at Fratered Health. I personally have um, I've run into Lisa on a few occasions and she is just a bundle of energy, positive information, and she is just a great life coach to help get us and keep us engaged and give us some more information about being present and engaged. Now I'd like to turn it over to Lisa, welcome her aboard and have her share a little bit about herself. Great, thank you so much for that very kind and, and warm welcome, Kathleen. And, and Mike, thank you so much for inviting me back here. I am really, really grateful. Again, for those of you that I didn't get the opportunity to meet um, last February when I had the pleasure of, of getting to present last for you all, um, my name is Lisa Hare, and Kathleen so wonderfully got that full title out with, without even having to take a breath. That's no easy feat right there by itself, right? So what do we get the pleasure of doing at Freighter Health? We get to do coaching, training, and education for our staff, for our leaders, for our physicians, our APPs, around communication best practices as they relate to the patient and the customer experience. And this is something I feel very passionate about. I've uh, been very fortunate to be with Freighter Health for 16 years this past November. And one of my, I'm gonna call it a pet project, one of my strongest passions resides around the power of mindfulness and being present. And for those of you that um, joined us last year, you may recall that I did uh, my presentation solely focused on mindfulness. And what I'm hoping to do today is to expand on that a little bit. So um, my, my hope is that you walk away with one pearl, one takeaway. So there's gonna be a bunch of different things that I'm going to be highlighting. Mindfulness is one of them and there's more. So really, really excited to be able to offer this for you. I am very informal, whether it's virtual or in-person, it's still the same me. So please don't hesitate. Should you have a question, 
a comment, a concern, maybe a story to share. I don't want you to feel you have to wait. So please feel free. I'm very, very fortunate to have awesome support um, from my friends, John and Amanda, who will also be monitoring the chat line. So very, very grateful because y'all must know that as much as I love presenting and I love people in communication, technology, not always my forte. So the good news is that we had an opportunity to connect prior to this, and I am confident that we're going to be able to provide a wonderful opportunity for you tonight. So again, lots of cool things to learn. I promise you, as much as I would love to talk to you all night, and y'all that know me know I could, I'm going to be respectful of time, and I'll make sure to keep one little eye on the clock just so that I can be mindful of that for you. So in honor of Heart Month and Valentine's Week, we thought this would be very, very timely. And actually, I must share with you a mantra that I thought would be lovely for us to get started just by putting in our minds. And that mantra that I heard today in a yoga class was, I live with an open heart. And I thought that may, might be nice for us to reflect on as we go ahead and get started this morning. So if it's all right, I'm just gonna um, pause for a moment. Um, am I okay to bring up the presentation? Folks on the other side, John, Amanda? Yes. yes. All right then, I'm going to share my screen, Amanda, thank you. And let's see if I can make the right selection Bear with me, all, all of a sudden, all these different things popped up on my screen. So I'm just gonna scroll down here. Here's what I want. All right. From the beginning and hopefully, I'm just gonna pull it up in the slide format. So let me get that going for you all. Hopefully, you're seeing a slide that says being present and engaged. I'm gonna pick on Mike because I can see him. Mike, can you give me a thumbs up? Does that look okay to you? All yes, right, thanks so, thanks so much, partner. So one thing that I do want to just help manage expectations. So when we did go through the PowerPoint, we recognize there are two video clips that I'd like to share. And we recognize that they came through um, not in a format that we wanted in the PowerPoint, uh, so when I come to those, I'm just going to stop sharing the PowerPoint and bring up the video link. So I just want to manage those expectations um, so you understand why we're doing that. That's for your optimal viewing experience. So let's go ahead and get started with the good stuff. What I'd like to do first is start out with a small arrival. So those of you, again, that were with me last year, you may recall this is a great opportunity for us to get centered in the present moment. So I'm going to invite you wherever you're at to go ahead, if you're not already, and get nice and comfortable in your chairs. I'm going to invite you to put both your feet on the floor if that feels okay for you. And go ahead, yeah, if you want to turn your videos off, it's okay. There's no worries for this. Put your hands in your lap or in a comfortable position. And now I'm going to ask you if it feels right to go ahead and close your eyes. And if that is too wonky for you, just gaze softly at the floor. And I just want you to begin by bringing your attention into your body. Notice how it feels having your body seated wherever you might be seated, couch, a chair, maybe the floor. Feel the weight of your body. Go ahead and take a few deep breaths. Feel how good that feels, that oxygen coming in, livening your body, and then letting that go. As you take your deep breath, Feel that oxygen really, really, that next breath just enlivening your body. And as you let that breath go, allow yourself to relax more deeply. Take a moment to notice your feet, how they feel on the floor. 
Maybe there are sensations, feet touching the floor. Notice how your legs feel against your chair, against the couch, if there's any pressure. Notice your back against the chair or the couch. Now bring your attention into that stomach area. If it feels tense or tight, allow it to soften. Go ahead and take another one of those fabulous breaths. Notice your hands. If they're feeling tense or tight, allow them to soften. Feel any sensations in your arms. Let your shoulders be soft. We carry so much weight in those shoulders. Notice your neck, your throat. Let them be soft. Relax. Soften your jaw. Feel free, move your jaw around. No one can see you. Move that jaw, let it relax. Let your facial muscles be soft. Just take a moment and notice your whole body feeling present. Go ahead and take another breath. Just be aware of your whole body as best as you can. And when you're ready, I'd like to invite you to open your eyes. Now, since I can't see most of you, I'm going to hope and assume that that was nice and relaxing for you. Something to consider is you can do this at any time. You don't need a guided meditation to get you there. Just need to close your eyes and focus on your breath. So look at that, our first slide, and you've already got a great takeaway. Again, this is something you can do anytime that allows you to be present in the moment. So let's talk about a few of the details we're going to go over today. Look at that, we've already crossed number one off our list. We learned in arrival. Great thing to do anytime you want to get centered and focused. We're going to talk just a little bit around mindfulness because, again, I don't want to make the assumption that we recall or that anyone, you know, whoever might have been present from last year. I've got a great video that describes it very, very well, highlighting meditation, what meditation is. Then I'm going to spend some time talking around intentional communication, engagement, like to focus emotional intelligence. What is that? And then we're going to wrap this up with some gratitude. So I think you guys are really going to like this. Let's continue on. So what's important for us to know around mindfulness is that it's been around for a very, very long time. Mindfulness has actually been around for about 2,500 years, but it's only as of recent that it's become more in the mainstream. So John Kabat-Zinn actually launched back in the 70s at University of Massachusetts Medical School, a mindfulness-based stress reduction program. So initially that's what it was focused on. And then it really evolved from there. And now you'll see mindfulness in places like Google, Aetna. Do you guys know that mindfulness is part of the military? So the military uses mindfulness as their way of helping folks get focus. So this is really, again, just to ground us, mindfulness is really around that present moment awareness of thoughts, of our feelings right there in the present moment and free of judgment. And that's key here, right? Is that whatever you're feeling, whatever those sensations are, that's what mindfulness is about. Just feeling it, just being with it. So with that, I've got a video. And again, as I mentioned, the video um, didn't play so well on this. So I'm gonna stop sharing for a minute. And then 
I'm going to bring up the video. So if you'll bear with me just for a moment. Dun, dun. I'll play some background music. It's me singing. Uh, and if I can, John, for some reason, I'm not seeing it listed on my availables to share. Would you be so kind as to do that for me to bring up that first video? I'll take a shot at it. What was that? I'll try it. Can okay, you hear me? sounds. I, I now I hear you. Yes, sounds okay, great. Okay, remember I'm not supposed to be heard. I'm supposed to be behind the scenes. <laughs> Sorry, and I totally called you out. <laughs> if you can't, no worries. I can fish it out. You got it. Now, how about sound? Hmm. Sorry, guys, bear with us just a moment as we work through this technical opportunity. Mindfulness is a shift in the way that you pay attention, but through that... Thank you, John. So what is mindfulness and what does it mean to you? Mindfulness is a shift in the way that you pay attention. But through that subtle shift, your entire world can transform from the inside out. When it comes to mindfulness, there's understanding it and then there's knowing it directly in your own experience. Now you might not understand mindfulness as a concept yet, but I can guarantee you, you've already experienced it. Can you remember a time when you were totally engaged in an activity? I mean utterly absorbed. You weren't thinking about the bills or work or the things you needed to do later. Every part of your being was focused in the moment. Maybe you caught your breath at an exquisite sunrise or maybe you experienced it spontaneously when you were out in the surf, skiing down a mountain or simply alone in nature. Yogis and dancers know mindfulness when they lose themselves in the joyful movement of the body. And artists know it when they're absorbed in the act of creation. When we find ourselves in these moments, a deep sense of connectedness with life suddenly emerges. Everything feels alive, radiates energy and emanates sacredness. Scientists now concur with what wisdom traditions have long been telling us that the keys to fulfillment and to true well-being lay not in the external circumstances of our lives, but the internal, the state of our minds and the quality of our consciousness. Mindfulness is in fact the core essence of every wisdom tradition throughout history. It's the reason for every spiritual practice ever performed. And more importantly, it's the key to true and lasting fulfillment. There are three components to mindfulness, three ways in which our attention shifts gears. Firstly, our attention is held on purpose. Mindfulness involves the conscious and deliberate direction of our awareness. So being mindful, you could say, is the opposite of being on autopilot which unfortunately for so many of us is the normal state of the mind for most of the day. And unfortunately, when we're on autopilot, the mind is really noisy. It chatters away ceaselessly and almost constantly. When you practice mindfulness, it allows you to wake up out of autopilot. It allows us to hold attention where we consciously choose. The second component of mindfulness is that we are immersed 
in the present moment. If we leave our mind to its own devices, it habitually wanders away from the present moment. It constantly gets caught up in replaying the past and projecting into the future. In other words, we're very rarely fully present in the moments of our lives. Mindful attention, however, is completely engaged in present moment experience, the here and the now. And thirdly, when practicing mindfulness, our attention is held non-judgmentally. We're aiming not to control or suppress our thoughts in any way. We simply aim to pay attention to our experiences without judging, labeling, or making stories about them in any way. Mindfulness then allows us to become the watcher of sense perceptions, thoughts and emotions as they arise without getting caught up in them and being swept away in their current. When you're able to live mindfully, you can literally transform your entire world from the inside out. And from that place, live in harmony with yourself and in harmony with the world around you. Thank you so much for saving the day and sharing that video. So much appreciated. I'm going to pull back up my presentation and we'll continue on. Hopefully everyone feels really inspired after seeing that. I know every time I see it, it's just like, oh my gosh, I love, I love how she breaks it down. I love the concept of that this is a part of who we are, you know, so whether we're watching a sunset, whether we're you know, doing an activity that we enjoy. I know for me as a daily walker, I love the opportunity to simply be present with my daily walks. Such an amazing opportunity. One thing that I was sharing with Kathleen and Mike before we got going was, I don't know if, if folks heard, um, you know, just speaking of athletics, the recent interview with Aaron Rodgers, he talks about the importance of being mindful. And he talks about mindfulness in his, um, in his conversation. And I think that's incredible. And I think that's the, the movement is that people are understanding more how this benefits both our professional and our personal lives and really helps us to be our best selves. So let's continue on. What I have in front of you is really a depiction of how mindfulness is impacted within our brains. So we are are really controlled a lot by that amygdala in our brain. That's that fight or flight, right? So when a situation comes to us, we're thinking, oh my gosh, you know, this is terrifying. I should do something about this, or I'm, you know, I have a reaction. And that's that's that stimulus that comes our way. So whatever it might be. And that's where we, it's very important that we notice how we are typically reacting. So how you may have reacted in the past might not necessarily be the best for your mindful approach. So instead using mindful approaches, we now make that choice. We shift how we may have originally thought and now we shift. And I love that because that says we have freedom. We have freedom to be able to make a choice. And now we move to that third aspect, which is where we're rewiring and we're thinking differently. So maybe instead of making a snap judgment about something, maybe we're thinking a little bit differently. Maybe we're thinking, hey, you know what? Maybe I need to learn more about this. Maybe I'm making up a story. I'm a story maker, so I get that. You know, it's like we make up stories when we don't know the information. So just something to think about. So now I'd like to go ahead, and I told you guys that this presentation is all going to be different aspects for how we can become more present, more engaged. So I'd like to transition to meditation because oftentimes there's confusion. People will think mindfulness and meditation are the same and they're actually quite different. Um, so what I'd like to do now is uh, we've got one more transition. So I'm gonna ask my good friend, John, if he doesn't mind bringing up the other video. This is a real short, fun video from our friends at Happify. 
So I'm going to stop my share for a minute. And if John, if you could work your magic on that other video link, I'd be ever so grateful. And I'd love to introduce you guys again, just high level, so we can make that difference between what is being mindful and meditation. So John, it's all yours. And you guys may recognize, again, folks that were with us last year, you may recognize some of these adorable characters. Despite what you may have heard, meditation does not involve joining a group, paying any fees, wearing any special outfits, sitting in a funny position, or believing in anything in particular. It is simple, secular, scientifically validated exercise for your brain. You don't have to do it yet, but just so you know, here are the three steps. One, sit with your back straight and your eyes closed. Two, notice the feeling of your breath coming in and going out. Pick a spot where it's most prominent. Usually that's your nose or your chest or your belly, and just focus your full attention on the feeling of your breath coming in and going out. Now, as soon as you try to do this, your mind's gonna go nuts. You're gonna start thinking about, what am I gonna have for lunch? Why'd I say that dumb thing to my boss? Your brain's gonna go nuts, and that's fine. The whole game is to notice when you've gotten lost and to start over, and then to start over again, and again, and again. Every time you do that, it's like a bicep curl for your brain, and it shows up on the brain scan. Scientists have found this in the lab. It's also, by the way, a radical act. You're breaking a lifetime's habit of walking around in a fog of projection and rumination, and you're actually focusing on what's happening right now. Meditation is unlike anything you do in the rest of your life. Failure is actually success. As I said, the whole game is just trying, failing, starting again, failing, starting again. Here's my advice. You should be meditating every day, five to 10 minutes a day, that's it. This doesn't require some giant investment. I don't care how busy you are, you have five to 10 minutes to give this a shot. I guarantee you it will make a big difference. Okay. Thank you so much, John, for sharing that. Appreciate, hopefully everyone enjoyed the snippet from our friends at Happify. Again, wonderful opportunity, just high level because you know recognizing that um, we don't have a whole ton of time to get into the in-depth, but hopefully that gave you a great understanding of the difference. So when we think about being mindful, that can really happen at any time. So mindful, we could be mindful in where, how we're eating, for example. How often have we eaten a meal and not even remembered it, right? Because maybe we were watching TV, maybe we weren't being present. So there's lots of things that we can be mindful around meditation is more of a way for how we can get there. So again, if you're excited and you want to learn more, I've got some resources for you too, but let's continue on. I've got more to share. So let's talk now about how we can help our bodies relax. That's important, right? Because we are, especially after this last year, we're all pretty much, you know, ah, there's a lot going on. So what I encourage you to think about, another great best practice, is really around training your body when you're not stressed out, so kind of offline, if you will, to just relax automatically. If you're already practicing these things, they will get easier for you when you are in times of stress, so when that fight or flight is kicking in. So here are some quick and easy things you can do anytime. Remember when we did that arrival and, and I encouraged you to relax that facial area? We hold a lot of tension here, that jaw in particular. Just let yourself relax there. It's okay, I know it looked funny. You can do that anytime though. Just allow that to relax. Your eyes too, a lot of tension gets held here. So letting that relax. Even just saying to yourself, you know what, I'm going to allow that tension just to drain and sink into the earth. I love to do that in the shower. I like to think about if I've had um, something troubling me, I like to think I'm going to let it wash all down. I give myself a little visualization. So I encourage you to do that. Same thing, you can do that with washing your hands. Like you're washing your hands, you can be like, 
negativity, negativity down the drain. So, you know, or challenging situation down the drain. You know, you can do things like that. You know, it's a, it's a good way to visualize that. And anytime you just do a body scan, you know what, gosh, how am I feeling? You know what, ooh, my shoulders are tense. I'm just gonna physically say, I'm gonna allow to relax them. You can do things like that. These are easy takeaways and they work. This comes by the way, and you guys will get all of these slides. I will tell you one of the best books I'm reading right now is listed at the bottom. It's called The Practical Neuroscience of Buddha's Brain, Happiness, Love, and Wisdom. And it's a really great read. So if you're thinking, gosh, what am I going to do this winter? It's kind of cold out. That's a great book to read. I highly recommend. All right, let's transition to some other great best practices. I'd like to talk to you for a few minutes around intentional communication. So as we're thinking about how we open up our heart to others, as we think about best practices to be your best self, one of the things I encourage you to really focus on is, again, that freedom. You don't have to get caught up. If you are feeling like I've been in this negativity spiral around subject X, think about how you can do it differently. Use that notice shift rewire. Be mindful of how you've maybe been previously reacting and think about how would you like to rewire that. The good news is every day is a new opportunity. You can start fresh tomorrow. So that's pretty awesome, right? I like to think too, other things that you can do in your communications with others. Use key words or phrases to help connect experiences. I like to say channeling your inner two-year-olds. So two-year-olds are always asking why, 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 why? So when you're talking to people, when you're explaining things, don't assume that people understand. Communication is often the biggest challenge for folks because I think that you as the recipient know what I'm saying or what my intention is. So we have to think about intent versus impact, right? So a good phrase that I like to share with people as an example is to be respectful of your time. Now that's the truth. I want to be respectful of your time. Again, if you gave me the opportunity, we could talk all night. I would love more than nothing to be able to do that. But I would truly want to be respectful of your time. So that helps connect the why. I hope that makes sense. I also encourage, and very timely in our conversation, is to start with heart. So simply starting with your heart. And, and this is especially powerful in building relationship and in sustaining relationship. How often do we have communication where we think, gosh, you know what? I, I didn't mean to say that, or I spoke because I was angry or, you know, my emotions were, well, if we use that notice shift rewire and we think, you know, next time I'm going to choose a different response and I'm going to do it, I'm going to start from my heart. That's going to give us a different outcome, Right. Another great best practice, thinking about communication with others, use open-ended questions, statements. You know, use, use things like, tell me more. If you're worried about, you know, how can I build relationship with others? Because if I ask you a question, you know, um, is everything okay? And, and you might just say no or yes, right? Yes, everything's fine, yeah, yeah, yeah. But if I said, you know, you don't seem quite yourself today. Um, How's everything going? Can you tell me more? That might encourage someone to share and to build relationship. That's making intentional communication. The good news is choice is yours. So let's continue on. A couple of other best practices I'd like to share under this umbrella, that power of managing up. So helping people to feel comfortable and confident, whatever that relationship looks like. Heck, I like to manage up the checkout um, folks at Woodman's. I mean, make their day, right? Think about how can we build relationships. Relationships can be little ones too. It's about how do we create those moments? We get the opportunity to take care of other humans, right? Whether it's personally, professionally, you know, in our family, we get an opportunity. We get to have that human experience. That's pretty awesome. So making sure that we're managing folks up and not managing down, because sometimes that happens very subtly, and that just means putting someone in a negative light, and that can happen very easily and without us being aware of it. Um, you know, finding how can we get to know other folks more? 
So, you know, whether again, it's a professional thing or maybe through, uh, you know, a book club or something of that nature, sharing mindful moments, sharing ways to get to know people better. Being mindful of that story we tell ourselves. I mentioned this a little while ago. We like to tell ourselves stories when we don't know the whole story, right? You kind of piece that together. A lot of times that's not reality. So when in doubt, asking, because it all comes down to personal accountability. And I love this quote I shared in the corner. It says, you must take personal responsibility. You cannot change the circumstances, the seasons or the wind, but you can change yourself. Who feels empowered after hearing that? I do, right? Yeah, yeah, you do. Thanks, Mike. Yeah, you do. All right, one activity that I just wanna tell you about, we won't be able to do it virtually, but it's a really good one. When we think about being intentional, you know, we love our cell phones, right? Or our technology, whatever that might be. Oh, Mike's got one out. So think about next time you're, you're he already knows where I'm going with this one. Um, think about uh, something you can do with another person is have them hold up their phone, right? So right in between you and then tell them something really, really, really important. And they just stay engaged on their phone. And now I'm not anti-technology, you guys. I love technology like the next person. What I'm saying is it can be a barrier. It can be a barrier in our communication. So it's really, really important that we're mindful of that. And so that's kind of a fun activity to do with your kids or, you know, at another meeting or something like that, you know, but being mindful about what can get in our way and technology can be a big barrier. Now I wanna talk for just a minute around engagement. And, and what does that mean? And you know, when we talk about being engaged, not the ring, we talk about really being in the zone, giving someone your full attention. And when you look at that picture, hopefully you get the idea. I don't know, I think that they're really engaged in their conversation. You know, I see that through the nonverbals, I see that through the, you know, the physical connectivity, the eye contact. So lots of ways that we can build relationship around engagement, how we can connect active listening. We all like to think we're great active listeners, right? Well, this is an opportunity for us to step back and say, hey, am I? And maybe you are. And if so, put yourself on the back. That's great. All right. Let's continue on uh, and talk a few minutes about emotional intelligence. Now, this is something I get really fired up about. If you guys are wondering if I can get more fired up, I can. So emotional intelligence is, is really wild. And I've done a lot of uh, research around this. And so I wanted to include uh, just a couple of quick things in case you're wondering like, what is this emotional intelligence? We'll talk. But a couple of things just to get you really excited about. Did you guys know that you are constantly having emotional reactions? So some are going to be really quick. Some are going to have less. But you're constantly, your emotions are always there. And I think that's really interesting because it's, it's really not about managing the emotion itself. It's really about mastering the flow of them and being in control of um, that flow. So Daniel Goleman, if you're not familiar and if you're interested in learning more, Daniel Goleman has done a lot. Probably he's like the gold standard of emotional intelligence. This is really around, you know, what are your emotions trying to tell you and, and, and how do we connect with others around this? And in case you're wondering, why do I care? This helps us to build a relationship. This helps us to be self. So let's continue on. I've got a few things that I want to share with you on this topic. Oh, check out this fun fact. Did you guys know that approximately 90% of the time we are inaccurate of our assessment of what other people are thinking and feeling? Who just got their mind blown right now? I know. I did too. Hey, yes, Kathleen. I know, right? I mean, it's just like, you got to be kidding me. Yes, that is a, a statistic. It's crazy. So these are opportunities. And I'm bringing up... Um, this model for you to see. And what I want you to take away is that there's, there's two aspects. There's that personal piece. And that's really about how are we managing our you know, thoughts and, and really perceiving those emotions. And then the social or the interpersonal is about understanding others' emotions and how you, how you um, 
really have relationship management around that. So there's, there's two big pieces to it. And it's really around what I see and what I do. And it's very, very powerful. So in case you're wondering, well, like, okay, what do I do with all this information? So if you're thinking, one, I want to learn more, I, I definitely recommend there's lots of stuff out there. But like I said, Daniel Goldman is, you know, really um, gold star. Things that you can do, even if you don't know anything about this and you just want to learn more, observe how you react to people. So, you know, I was talking earlier about judgment. So just ask yourself the question without judging yourself. Do you judge before you know the facts? How can we get past that? We can ask, right? We can learn more. And if you are feeling like, yeah, I kind of stereotype, again, this isn't a place of judgment. This is about awareness. So get curious, learn, try to put yourself in others' shoes. So thinking about like empathy, try to be accepting of others' perspective and their needs. Um, I like this one, practicing humility. So giving others a place to shine, that's important too, right? Supporting one another. So it's really a great opportunity for us to look at ourselves, um, think about what happens and, and what can we do to help that emotional response? Think about that notice shift rewire, see how it's all tying together here. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and just really taking a look at those actions. Now, how you can grow your emotional intelligence there's, you know, lots of different things out there. I'm just highlighting some key aspects for you. Journaling is beautiful. If you guys haven't journaled before in your lives, there's no right or wrong. Keeping a book, writing some things down, thinking about how you react to things, slowing down. This is a great opportunity to do it. New year, new you, right? So slowing down, thinking about how your reactions are. Um, thinking about, you know, going back to like meditation. So, you know, practice being calm. So utilizing the breathing. So even though you're going to have challenging situations, I told you guys this before, I cannot take your stress away. And you wouldn't want that. Some stress is good. It's about managing, right? Looking for good in situations. I love doing that. You know, in, instead of, oh gosh, this person cut me off, they're a jerk. I think, well, I, I just, I simply hope that they're safe in their travels. And I'm sure they didn't mean to do that. I mean, come on, haven't we all cut someone off and been like, God, I'm really sorry I didn't see that, you know? It happens, we're humans. So um, again, lots of good ways that you can grow your emotional intelligence. In the box, I have another uh, call out that I'd like to share. Asking yourself what just happened next time you have a physiological response. And then just pause. What just happened here? Being mindful of that. It's good stuff. All right, now I wanna to transition to gratitude. And you guys, if I can't express this enough, how important gratitude is. I mean, literally you'll see some of the pictures that I have on this screen and I truly believe gratitude changes everything. I really do. And it's the little things that make a big difference. And, and it, it doesn't have to be huge. You don't have to, write a book around this. You don't have to um, you know, spend 20 minutes telling someone how much they mean to you. It's a simple thank you. It's simply saying what you did made a difference. Here's what it did for me. And it replicates. So you share gratitude with another person, they share gratitude with another person. It's like a domino effect, it's beautiful. So a couple of great best practices I can give for you around gratitude, be mindful. Observe your thank yous. Is it kind of like that? Yeah, 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 thank you. Okay, yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. How are you feeling when you're doing that? Do you feel like it's an afterthought? Does it feel like maybe I'm a little absent-minded? Again, no judgment, just awareness. Do a scan of your body. Are you already thinking about what's next? Yeah, yeah okay, thanks, gotta go. We moving out the door, right? What can I do to be more present in the moment. Here's a, here's a great thing you could do. Just take one interaction. And so when that instinct pops up to do your quick thanks and walk out, just be present. And then take that moment and think about why. 
What is it about? What, why do you feel grateful? Really, really marinate in that for a minute. It doesn't take long. Then try the thank you. And you'll see what a difference that makes for how you connect with others. Another great way that you can internalize the positives, a uh, couple of things. Turn those positive facts that you come across into positive experiences. So let's talk about, I'll give you guys one really awesome one. So every year my husband buys me a hibiscus plant, you know, big tree thingy, way off the screen, big. And every year I forget to bring it inside in time and it dies. And it really makes me sad. It's one of those tropical ones. So it doesn't make it past like October, maybe. This year I brought it in and I've got a little sunlight that I put on it and I talk to it. I sing to it, whatever it takes, you know? Want to hear something really cool? I got blooms on it. Blooms on my hibiscus in the dead of winter. I got blooms. So you know what? That keeps me going. I don't just think about it as like, oh yeah, you know, that's great. I think about it like, oh, you know, like really awesome. And that, that keeps me going. So that's just a perfect example. How often do cool things happen? I don't know, the sunshine today, was anybody really stoked about that? I was, oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. We're like, yes, I can take you 10 degrees if there's sun. So we've got this, right? So think about that. Look for it, seek it out. What's great today? Bring that mindful awareness to it. Because our brains want to seek out the negativity. You got to train it. You got to train it to think about what's positive, what's great, what's wonderful. And just really savor it. Hold on to that. And, and what that does is that, that traces it in your memory. And you think about how good that feels. And then just allow yourself to enjoy it. Relax. And suddenly that becomes an experience. It's not just positive thing, it's like, wow, I had a great day. I got some hibiscus blooms. Yeah. Simple, but it makes a difference, you guys. Makes a difference. So we're getting low on time. There's one final wrap up that I'd like to offer for you if you're open to it. It's called a loving kindness meditation. And I'm wondering if we had two minutes, would that be okay? Can I either get a, a thumbs up or a nod from Mike or Kathleen? Okay, great. So you guys, thank you so much. So I'm gonna invite you again, same thing. Just go ahead and get comfortable. Let's close our eyes if it feels okay. Again, feel free to take your videos off. I just want you guys to go ahead and take some deep breaths. Just feel how good that feels, right? It's free too, isn't that amazing? And now what I want you to do in this great week of Valentine's and in this wonderful heart month, I want you to think of a person close to you who loves you very much. Could be someone from the past or present, someone still in life or who has passed. Imagine that person standing on your right side, sending you their love. That person is sending you wishes for your safety, for your well-being, and happiness. Feel the warm wishes and love coming from that person towards you. Now bring to mind the same person or another person who cherishes you deeply. Imagine that person standing on your left side, sending you wishes for your wellness, for your health and happiness. Feel the kindness and warmth coming to you from that person. Now imagine that you are surrounded on all sides by all the people who love you and have loved you. Picture all your friends and loved ones surrounding you. They are sending you wishes for your happiness, well-being, and health. Bask in the warm wishes and love coming from all sides. You are filled and overflowing with warmth and love. Now repeat the following phrase silently. May you live with ease. May you be happy. May you be free from pain. I invite you to extend that invite 
to those that are on your mind, in your spirit, and to yourself. It is very, very important that we allow that extension to self. And with that, I'm going to invite you to open your eyes and come back to us. That was an abbreviated, just so you know, the original loving kindness meditation is considerably longer. I did want to make sure though that we ended on a timely manner. So if at a future time, you all wanna to get together and we'll do a longer version, I'd be happy to do that for you. I hope that you enjoyed that closure meditation. What I have for you on the screen, our list of resources, these are certainly not all inclusive, just some of my favorites. Happify was that second video, lots of great, wonderful resources there. Same with Mindful and Center for Greater Good. Your Alexa, I have to say it quietly or mine will start talking to me, has a lot of good resources for you. Did you know you can practice mindfulness with yours? It's amazing. Lots of good free apps out there for you. I'm currently using Headspace and it's wonderful. It reminds me how many, oh, I see Kathleen nodding. Are you using that one too? Awesome. Tells me how much I've been doing. If I'm, if I'm doing it and how many days straight, it inspires me, gets me going. So wherever you go, um, Mind Tools is another really cool place to check out. So again, you all will have um, these resources at your, um, at your availability. And in addition, I'm also going to be sending an electronic version of a, a small spiral bound book that gives uh, a lot of what we've just talked about um, and more. So that's yours too, if you would like that. I wanna take a moment to extend my sincerest gratitude. I am so very grateful for your time, for your energy, for your, um, your, your just amazing selves. So thank you so much. And with that, I'm gonna stop sharing. I know we're almost out of time and I so apologize that time flew. Um, so thank you. And now I'll turn it over to our hosts, Mike and Kathleen. Wow. I can't even, I would like to offer a virtual standing ovation um, for your presentation, Lisa. We're so grateful. So thank you. And we, with, with our sincerest gratitude, you know, for being so welcoming, upbeat and offering such a helpful presentation. I mean, some of the things that stood out to me, reminding us just to be in the here and now every day and as much as we possibly can the mindfulness and being immersed in the moment and reminding ourselves. I know I will remind myself, whoop, my dog just laid on my lamp. I got to grab her. Okay. It won't fall now. Whoop, sorry. But um, just reminding us to be off of our autopilot. That's one of the things that we tend to, when you're so busy um, being practicing, being calm through meditation um, engagement, giving people our full attention and how important that is. There's so many great tips that you gave us, Lisa. We're so grateful. Um, and especially, you know, wrapping it up with gratitude, even the smallest things really make a difference to people. And it's just nice to have a reminder. So thank you so much for your time today and your your wealth of information and just your um, welcoming and kind presentation. And we're really, really grateful. We do, and just so you all know, we did record this. So this is something that you can have access to after this presentation is over. First of all, I'd like to ask if you were uh, in participating, if you could please so kindly give us an evaluation of how, how this program was and, and how, you much, how much you appreciated it. Um, the complete living well before and after transplant survey. Um, you can do the surveymonkey.com forward slash r forward slash lw0209.21. We're going to send that link to everybody. So if you could do that, we'd be so, so grateful. And then to um, close out the show, I just wanted to let you know there's a couple of upcoming events. Um, we have on Tuesday, March 9th, we have our Physicians of Confession, What I Wish Every Patient Would Ask Me. We'd love for you to join us for that. And then Tuesday, February 16th, Getting Social with Living Donors. These are folks that have 
um, either decided to donate a kidney or received a kidney from a, a living donor and just hearing their stories, talk about inspiration. Um, and then on Tuesday, March 16, living donation in community in, in, and communities of color because they, they struggle not only with COVID, but in the uh, world of, of chronic illnesses as well. So we'd love to welcome you back for that. But otherwise, um, on behalf of the National Kidney Foundation, of Wisconsin, I would like to thank Lisa Hare for her very, very inspirational presentation, Amanda and John for their help behind the scenes and welcoming Mike to our organization. It, he is just doing some wonderful things already out the gate. He's just chasing. Um, I want to um, have you pay a real close attention this coming weekend. There's going to be some real fun news about Mike coming out. But you can find a record the recording on our website. Um, I don't want to give too much away, Mike, but I'm gnawing at the bit anyway. Um, but on our website, you can find the recording of this as well under the resources tab. So again, being present and engaged. Thanks for being a part of this program. And we'll look for seeing you all next time. Take care. Thank you, Thank you Lisa. Thank, Thank you. you.